Ladies and gentlemen of the Shrek Gaming Center.com video, we're going to be discussing the PlayStation 4's CPU. Rumors are circulating that the 7th CPU core for the PlayStation 4 has been made available for games developers thanks to a recent SDK update. So you may recall this news very familiar from Camp Microsoft where indeed a SDK update was released for the machine which allowed developers to tap into much of the 7th CPU core reserve. Remember both machines do have 8 Jaguar cores available, we'll discuss that in just a second however. And so Microsoft decided that hey you know what we want to give the developers more performance available uh, for the actual games, the software library, so what we're going to do is we're going to allow some of the Kinect features to be disabled uh, in the background and we will free up those resources and give them to developers. It would appear that Sony have decided to do much the same thing. Unfortunately there's not been a full SDK leak which is what happened with the Xbox One. In fact, how we get this information is because of FMOD Studio. So there is FMOD Studio, just in case you're not too familiar with it, is an audio API. And there has been a changelog, a revision changelog, which has popped up on the 171115. So just in case you're, you know, from America, that would be, of course, the 17th of November. So fairly recently. And it says, and I quote, Studio API patch release at build 69975. Features low level API when using system record start that provide FMOD sound can now be any chant. Uh, low level API improved performance of convolution reverb audio effects when VET is zero or input whatever. And then the one that actually makes the difference, this, this is the critical one. Low level API PS4 added fmod underscore thread underscore count, sorry, core zero. So I'll read that again fmod underscore thread underscore core six to allow access to newly unlocked seventh core. Now remember that when dealing with computing, core one is actually the first CPU core is always labeled core zero, hence the reason in this case that core 6 would be the 7th CPU core. I just wanted to clarify that because you might not be too familiar with it. So let's go a little bit into the architecture and then do some breakdown here. This is kind of a crash course and many of you probably are familiar with the basic architecture of the PlayStation 4 slash Xbox One. They are of course using an APU. So all that basically means is a CPU, a GPU, the graphics processor, <clears throat> plus a bunch of other uh, components all stuffed on to the same piece of silicon. It's a massive piece of silicon. Now in the case of the Xbox One, it has eight CPU cores. They are four um, cores per module. There's two modules. They're x86-64 processors, of course. And those on the Xbox One are clocked to 1.75 gigahertz. The PlayStation 4 is actually at a slight deficit, it's run at 1.6 GHz, but the primary difference between the two machines is that the PlayStation 4 was only running 6 processors where it, for games, whereas the Xbox One, we know, has been running, well, one, uh, sorry, 7 processors. Technically, it's 6 full cores plus 80% of the 7th core, assuming the developers don't want to do anything with Kinect. So while the PlayStation 4 certainly does have advantages over the Xbox One, primarily the memory and the GPU, both are essentially, let's just go with faster than the Xbox One, particularly the GPU, the PlayStation 4 has run slower in certain games. This is particularly noticeable in Assassin's Creed Unity, the actual raw frame rate for the um, PlayStation 4 version of the game was considerably lower than the Xbox One, particularly in heavily densely crowded areas. Uh, we noticed that with our own testing. Other titles which were quite noticeable were GTA 5. There is some instances with GTA 5 where the frame rate was actually slightly higher on the, the uh, Xbox One, but this was <clears throat> countered by the fact that there was actually less foliage, but what we noticed it primarily was in heavy traffic sections. So in other words, you're in like uh, the middle of the city, you're belting along at a really good speed, semi trucks and everything else is going along and you'll start noticing that. So it's fairly 
obvious to say that, yeah, you know, it's all the way down to the fact that the, um, you know, PlayStation 4 had a deficit, a slower CPU than the Xbox One. It is still worth remembering that the Xbox One does have a faster CPU than the PlayStation 4. That's, that's confirmed. We know that the Xbox One CPU is running at 1.75 gigahertz. The PlayStation 4 is running at 1.6. So, essentially, it's a bit of a juggle at the moment because we're not sure what the situation is with the 7th CPU core with the PlayStation 4 because of three reasons. The first, is it happening? It's really easy to say, well, yeah, it's going on, but we are only, of course, dealing with patch notes. We're not dealing with what Sony have told us. We are essentially dealing with a lot of speculation. It would be a pretty good indicator that, yes, this is actually what's really happening, but obviously, it doesn't necessarily mean it is happening. We can only speculate that this is true based upon these notes. And by the way, all the way back in January of this year, there is a patch note which does correlate to the fact that the Xbox One does have access to the 7th CPU core. Xbox One um, added access to 7th CPU core, and this once again was way back in January of this year. So once again, that would indicate that there is correlation between the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One's same patch notes. But what other potentials are there? Well, first of all, the PlayStation 4's CPU, um, we don't know how much of, it, of that CPU is now available to games. So for the sake of argument, is it 100% of the 7th core? Is it 50%? 80% like the Xbox One? Is it another number? Does it? Is it dependent upon various situations? So for the sake of argument, if you're using the camera, if you're using certain other functionality in the system, do developers have to, um, you know, what, what hoops basically do they have to jump through? Or is it possible that it's just for everything now? We just don't know. Essentially, we're just guessing. Um, and the third thing is because we don't have access to the SDK itself, um, essentially, we're making some guesses upon what's going on with the Xbox One and what's going on with the PlayStation 4 as a whole. So, we don't know what other optimizations are going on behind the scenes, and all we can really do is kind of go with what has been mentioned and discussed previously like for example what's going on with the xbox one gpu we know that for example it's gone under multiple different iterations of drivers sdk updates which have improved the amount of um gpu reserve or rather reduced the amount of uh, gpu reserve that for connect and other system functionality there have been multiple graphics card drivers for it um, we've seen improvements to ESRAM utilization, we've seen improvements to, once again, the CPU side of things, and all these other uh, updates. So we can't really tell how the PlayStation 4 is developing, because we don't really have an in-depth changelog of the PlayStation 4. We have some comments with developers who have said X, and we've got developers' comments with Y. Like, for the sake of argument, we know there's a low-level API for the PlayStation 4, we know there's a high-level API with the PlayStation 4. Essentially, the low-level API is more DirectX 12-ish, but there's also a high-level API, which is more like the X11. And we also know that supposedly, and that's my favourite word for this video, that there was talk that they were going to release um, maybe Vulcan for the PlayStation 4, which is another low-level API that's kind of got a lot of potential. It works across a myriad of different platforms, including um, Linux, Windows, uh, and even on various Apple devices. It will work across Android and whatever other else technology. Sony have, if memory serves, been one of the principal investors of it, of it, but we don't know if they're going to continue or actually push forward with it. Finally, um, how much of a difference will it make for games? Well, because we don't know when they actually released the SDK update for the PlayStation 4, or if it's actually happened yet, if it's live, 
We don't know if any of the games we're currently playing, so for the sake of argument, you could run out by Just Cause 3 uh, in the next couple of days, and it'll be like, well, does it use the 7th core? I don't know. We can't tell, unfortunately. And that's kind of the problem. All we can do is we can measure the frame rate, we can measure the improvements to the graphics, we can say, yeah, the shadows look better, we can say, yes, these are better textures, but unfortunately what we don't have access to, we can't make any measurements, we can't run tools to say, okay, the PlayStation 4's CPU typically, before this update, was, was giving... I'm just pulling a number out of my ass. 20,000 draw calls on average per second. Now it's running and pushing out 24,000. Once again, just pulling a number out of my ass. In fact, quite a low number, to be honest with you. We just don't know that. Similarly, we don't know any other um, potential measurements because we just cannot run them. Once again, all we can do is make guesstimates. So until the SDK or something else becomes publicly available... All we can do is make a lot of speculation and a lot of educated guessing. But I would say that this rumour looks pretty legitimate. It really does. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised. Here's why. Because Sony to not do this. In fact, I'm kind of surprised they've not done it earlier. But it does take a while for these things to come in. It's not like you can be like, oh, okay, well, Microsoft have done that. Let's just get on with it. You can't do that. Essentially... You need to actually figure out what you're going to do with the other system, um, with the other uh, threads, with the other processors. Are they going to be cancelled? Can you reduce the load on the processor for the sake of argument? Can you say, hey, we can reduce the graphics load, we can reduce the driver load, we can reduce th this, this and this, and that will make the system run smoother and we don't need to take up so many resources. All of these things need to be considered, and it does take some time. It can't just be, oh, well, Microsoft have done that, let's do the same thing. So, I think this is probably legitimate, because it would make sense from a cross-platform perspective. It would make sense that Sony would say, no, we're not going to give Microsoft this advantage. We have a GPU advantage, we've got a memory advantage... They do have a CPU advantage in clock speed, but let's not also give them extra core advantage. Let's, let's take that away. And to be honest with you, this is pretty similar to how any developer... I can guarantee to you that if Sony, if Microsoft, if Nintendo, if Bob down the road was the only person creating a system, they would still do very similar things because it's what you have to do. When you have an updatable SDK or an updatable uh, firmware, this is what you have to do. The PlayStation 3 did it, they reduced the, um, the, the reserved amount of memory, the memory reserved basically for OS functionality, they reduced it, gave more to developers. The Xbox 360 did it, where they improved various aspects of the um, SDK as well, and of course the PlayStation 4 would do it. In fact, even the PlayStation 2, Sony had originally decided, yeah, we actually wanted to do this, but the problem was that you couldn't just flash the PlayStation 2's firmware. And so the only way you could do it was via a memory card, and it, it just didn't really work in practice. Because if you remove the memory card or whatever, it just it just didn't work. And therefore they couldn't really roll out the firmware how they initially intended. So yeah, not really surprised about this one. It's a good thing in my opinion. It just means we're going to get better looking games on the PlayStation 4, which is... Obviously a good thing, because we're gamers, right? And that's the idea. It's very easy to say, yes, more frame rates, or yes, better X. But the reality is, we want to play good-looking games, we want fun games, and we want a system that's just going to just kick ass. And that's whether you're a Nintendo fan, that's whether you're a Microsoft fan, that's whether you're a Sony fan, that's whether you're a PC fan. It's really easy to get really bogged down in the details, and I do as well. I am I am that person that's playing, as you know, if you've been watching my Rise of the Tomb Raider, hint, hint, hint. I am that person that's looking and be like, wow, they actually did a really nice job of the lighting. Or, uh, you know, I kind of feel that texture's a bit ropey or whatever. But, ultimately, you don't really think about that 90% of the time. You're still thinking, holy shit, this is a really fun game. And that's kind of the big thing. 
We are gamers, right? Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.